Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. All good in here today, bit of good news. Isaac is blitzing the cylinder heads this week. Top man, look at him, sweaty mess. <laughs> Paul's back in the building. It's Hello. great to see you, Paul. Hello mate, it's good to see you. Where have you been? I've been a busy man. Doing again. your own stuff. Busy man. No good to us. Well, oof. well, you know. But are you busy with your own stuff, Paul? I'm just I'm laying every day. Just don't do any work. I'd say I'd put down a link in the uh, description below to go and follow your YouTube channel, but you've been slack about it. Been I? slack about that, mate. Well, Need well, to I do get have on a YouTube it, channel. These viewers are dying to watch what you do. I do have a YouTube channel, but it's just uh, videos of me rallying. Okay, well, I'll put I'll put down that. I'll put down. But it's the, pretty um, boring. The link to that. Yeah. But you need to get on it. So yeah. what have you got going on today, mate? This, uh, this cosy block, mate, mm. I've, uh, I've cleaned, I've painted. I'm about to put some new core plugs in. Very nice. Um, we've done it in the satin black, I see, rather than the high gloss black. Yep. Yeah, well, you want it in the satin black, didn't they? So uh, nice. Yeah, nice yeah finish, very nice. nice so this finish. is the normally aspirated block um, that I put the liners in. All bored. We wanted it in satin black. Um, so Paul's just cleaning up some bits, really. So Done the rods. con rods, what's the score with them, mate? Size these rods, balance them. Um, we well, had to find a replacement rod. Could one, well, this rod over here was about near a thou and a half, two thou. Oh, right. Big, remote round here. Mm. And then down here is about- Typical trait of these cosy rods. It's it? about half a thou big there, so, oh, uh, small. Go. So it was definitely oval. So we found a replacement rod, which, I've sized up to top limit. We've got various spares upstairs. Which is spot on. And we've uh, cleaned them up in the vapour blaster, all balanced. Very nice. All balanced point, 0 0.1 of a gram, so they're basically the same weight. Okay, so this, I said to you in the last video, um, the pistons we're not going to be using, the ones we bought, so we've got some on the way. Hopefully they should arrive from Burton Power today. Yep. Um, and the bearings also, we've got the gaskets and that up there, the cams, the heads all ported. Looking very nice to normally aspirated spec. Lovely set of Gen V's. Lovely set of Gen V's. They widened your eyes yesterday when you turned up, didn't they? Well, I am quite partial to set of Gen V's. You are indeed. Well, I do love a set of Gen V's. So as soon as we get those pistons, John has sorted the crank, or he's halfway through sorting the crank, so we can get that balanced, get it all in, dummy built. Yeah. And, sure. um, yeah, should be able to turn this one around fairly sharpish, really. Got the big wing sump down there. Um, so that's Paul, what he's on. But anyway, good news is today, the Cosworth over there for Lee. Um, this is the one that we've, we've had to order a special liner. Um, and fortunately, guys, it's turned up today, which is good. So I'm just about to press this liner in and fingers crossed my measurements have been correct because if they're not, we're in trouble. Um, but yeah, this has turned up probably about two weeks quicker than they said, which is fantastic. Because as soon as um, Paul has finished that Cosworth, I'm gonna get him on that one. Everything's pretty much ready to go on this. I've obviously got to still do some work on the head, but the pistons have got the cutouts. Um, the crank's all ground and balanced, etc. So clutch is all balanced. So yeah, as soon as, um, as, soon as I've finished the block, which hopefully will be Monday, or well, it might even be tomorrow, um, get Paul on that one, so good news. Right guys, so thumbnail and title. This Volvo in the background, it's a, what is it? S60R. Um, now the story goes, you probably, if you've been watching our videos from the beginning, you probably remember quite a while ago, we mentioned this Volvo engine that we put top hat liners in. So the story was at the time, we couldn't get oversized pistons for this. Um, the pistons were mint that he had in it, so we went for a set of rings and he wanted to uprate the power. So we put top hat ductile iron liners in. Now Westwood, who we get our liners from, they do a specific kit for this Volvo engine, which is the same as the Ford, etc. They do um, the three centre liners, because obviously it's a five cylinder. The three centres have got flats either side and the two end ones have got one flat on. Now all the flats butt up against each other and what that does is it sort of acts like one of those um, those kits that you sort of drive a wedge in between and um, like a strengthening kit really. So that's what they do. They butt up against each other and we machine those out. Um, so the top hats all sit in 
within the uh, the centre casting. So it's a uh, an open deck on the outside, but the the liners are not like the dart and sleeves where they you eliminate all the aluminium. It just goes within the aluminium. The gasket seals on the top. Um, and the top hat sort of just goes down. Same as what we do on the Cosworths, everything else really. Um, never had a problem at all. Now you bear in mind it's a, an aluminium block, so these liners are not like when you put them in with cast iron. That if, when you put them in the aluminium block, you put them in like a, about a thou interference, so next to nothing. You heat up the block, which opens up about three or four thou. Um, you put them in with the sealing compound, so you quickly slide them in um, we always sort of press them so they make sure that they sit flat um, and then they, when the block cools down, it shrinks. Um, so you're not pressing them in at an inter a real interference really, anything that will risk cracking the block or anything. So that's what we do, done quite a few of these, never had a problem. Now, um, Paul who owns this vehicle, he's a lovely guy, um, now this has been going very shortly after he got the car running he said he goes down the road and literally within a few miles it sort of empties almost empties the header tank into the sump um, and when I mean empties the header tank he's basically drove it in here now we've been planning on having a look at this he's pressurized the system before um, took the sump off couldn't see any leak down um, past the liners if it was happening when it was hot you would think with that amount of leak it would happen when it was cold a bit anyway or you would see some evidence um, so he lives about two miles away from here he's put fresh oil in the sump obviously put it all back together he's drove down here um, the header tank was empty and this is what we had in the sump when he emptied it so this is the sump off the car you can see it's just mayonnaise and that there is literally so diluted with water. There's literally about two or three liters of water gone into the sump in the space of about two, two and a half miles. So he has got a considerable leak into the oil. Um, there's no oil going in the water and it's not pressurizing. So the reason it's down here, um, you see it's got it on axle stands, it's got the sump off. I said, what we'll do is we'll wait for a couple of days for it to sort of drip as much as it's going to drip. Now, what he's done with this is he's put an additive in the water that glows up under UV light. Okay, so I've got a UV light. Now, I'm going to get underneath and have a look, which I haven't done yet. Um, and we are going to be looking for an oil stain sort of ultraviolet light really in any sort of area that may be cracked other than um, the oil that's splashed about underneath, if you know what I mean. So when I get underneath, I'm expecting to see a sort of UV lit up oil splashed around, obviously, because it's been going around the engine. But what we're looking for is we're looking for any marks on the block around the liners that is just a line of, of UV light, really. So let's get underneath, guys, and see what we can see. If I can get my old body underneath. So this is the light we're going to be using. Okay. And I'm going to be lying on that rather than me getting. Oh, dear me. I was just going to slide underneath this car. Well, this does make life easier, I must admit. Um, right. So you can see, you can see the splashes of oil all around the place. Um, underneath there, there didn't appear to be. You see, that's what we're looking for. You see that drip of watery oil on that bolt there. That is just normal. But what we're looking for is all on the block there. We're going to be looking for a line, really, of, of anything that resembles a big crack. But so far, I mean, there's, the trouble is, there's that much water going in. Um, I don't know. It's, there's that much water in the oil. It's, it's all sort of lit up. You see, it's right even underneath the piston on the small end. So that's obviously where it's splashed about. But on the block, all around there... You know, we're not seeing, I'm not seeing any sort of alarming, cracked looking areas. Um, see that, that's where the bottom of the liner is. You see, if you just see the base of the piston and then next to the light, in between the piston and the casting is the, is the base of the liner, but I'll be very surprised if 
that's creating an issue. I mean, I would say a lot of you, when I've put this in a video before, have mentioned it's going to be something external. Now, we did pressure test the oil cooler. He hasn't replaced the oil cooler, um, but we did it cold. Obviously, it's difficult to do it hot. So, yeah, I'm not seeing anything visible there that I'm alarmed with. So I'm not seeing anything that I'm alarmed with there. Um, like I say, he did, we have tested the oil cooler, but it's, it was cold. It's not, you can't get it up to that sort of temperature. So my feeling is now, unless you guys can suggest anything else, um, obviously if it was a crack block issue that's around the liner, then we're gonna have to sort it, you know, because he did sort of alarm us when we did it, which was about three years ago. Um, but I'm not seeing anything like that and it's just one of those situations where I would love someone in the comments who have, has been through this to suggest something that it may be. I'm thinking at the moment, replace the oil cooler anyway. Um, anything that's got, that could affect oil into, uh, water into oil, replace it um, and then go from there. But it's one of them situations where we're sort of scratching our head guys. So I'd be over the moon if any of you could suggest something a bit more um, a bit more like what it could be. Right, so we've got a little job here for Paul. Um, so these are alpha pistons, apparently. Um, and what he wanted me to do is we've got the exhaust valve cutout and the inlet valve cutout. Now, apparently he's done a dummy build. Um, and on these, the piston, believe it or not, the top of the piston diameter is wider than the bowl in the cylinder head. So what you have to do, I think this is a um, a competition build that he does. I don't know a great deal about these alphas, Paul's your man. Uh, but what we have to do is open out the valve cutout diameter, one millimeter, and then I have to put, I've got my tool here that I've made for him. I have to put a chamfer on the inside of here so it just basically clears the cylinder head. Otherwise, it's about 35 thou. I think if, once these are on TDC, it lifts the head about 35 thou. So what I do is, as soon as it starts touching on, See, we make it run true. I've set this to zero so I know where I'm going already. But we sort of wind it in until it just touches, like so. And then we go in, uh, what do we go in? 40 thou. So just keep winding in until we go, until we get to the zero. You can see there. Absolutely lovely, wind back out. And there is your clearance. You've got a nice bit of flow there. Lovely jubbly. And that's um, Paul's job done. So I put my, smeared my 620 locking compound in the ball there. And this is gonna be the moment of truth, guys. Well, one good thing, it doesn't fall down the bore, which I suppose is good news. Always a bit nerve wracking doing this. So what I normally do is just start to press the liner in. So it sort of centers itself, goes in about 10 mil. Because um, otherwise you are relying on the bed, which is always a bit wibbly wobbly. You're relying on that bed being absolutely true to this ram face, which you can't, you can't guarantee it. And I wouldn't trust it. Because if you, you just continue to push, that, the bottom of that ram is gonna wanna push the top of that line of square to itself. Um, and if it's not true to the bore, it's just gonna get to a point and maybe crack, crack the block. So it's got to give. So by using the two bars here, in theory, that liner is going to just press in. It's just going to follow the existing bore and it's going to be able to rock in the X and the Y on those on those bars. So that's my theory and it seems to have worked up until now. So far, we're at about just over a ton. See, it's going up now, look. 
Now that gives a good indication that the interference is perfect on this. And that is about as tight as you want that. The reason it started to jump at the end isn't because of the interference, it's because of the glue's gone and while I've recorded it started to go off and it's just snatching on the glue. So that guys, I'm more than happy with. That is down as far as you go. We're up about, probably about five or six ton there. Um, so yeah, perfect. Over the moon with that. Now what we're gonna do is get this one set up on the boring bar, get it bored, faced, and give it to Paul to clean up. Fantastic news. Well guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Until next week, have a great weekend and we'll see you then. Thanks guys.